Hey, how's it going everybody? It's the Game Economist here and today I'll be talking about Iron Banner and how to improve your experience and increase your rewards. You fight well against your fellow guardians. The Iron Banner game type is Control and when you win a match you get 5 tokens, when you lose a match you get only 2 tokens. That's considerably less and it means if you're winning only about half of your matches you're wasting a lot of time. You want to be winning the vast majority of your matches and the tips that I'm going to give you are going to improve that. The very first piece of advice I would give you is do not be lazy put a team together. Do not use the random matchmaking. You know who else uses the random matchmaking? The very worst PvP players use the random matchmaking. You know why? Because they're too lazy to put a team together or because they get kicked out of teams, okay? So if you're using random matchmaking, you are significantly increasing your chances of losing. The other problem is people in random matchmaking almost never communicate. So when you put a set team together, you're increasing your odds of winning by a lot by ensuring the quality of the players and by making sure everybody is able to communicate to each other. Now, if you're having trouble putting a team together, I want to strongly recommend that you do a search for Destiny LFG. LFG stands for looking for group, and it's one of the best ways to put a team together, even if it's with strangers that you've never met. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is how to win control. Basically, you have two teams competing to reach 100 points. The other way that you can win is if the timer ends and you have more points than your opponent. You earn points by killing people and by capturing areas. When you capture an area, A, B, or C, you get exactly one point. This is not affected by how many people are standing on top of it when you capture it, so you really only need one person to capture the area. The other two people should be looking for angles to defend you or to pressure your opponent. The next way that you earn points is by killing people. Now this is where it gets a little more complicated. You basically have a point multiplier, and it's based on how many areas you own. If you own one or no areas, you'll only get one point per kill. But if you own two areas, you'll get two points per kill. And if you own all three areas on the map, which is really difficult to do, you will get a whopping three points per kill. They actually call that a power play. One of the main concepts I want you guys to take away from this is that if your opponent controls all three areas, you definitely don't want to die. And when they control two of the areas, you do need to be cautious. You need to pressure with caution, okay? Likewise, if you own two of the areas, you should be playing a little more aggressively because you want to trade. If you trade with your opponent, you get two points, they only get one point. If you have all three flags, it's the same deal. When you trade, that is when you both die, your team will get three points, their team will only get one point. So it's okay to be aggressive when you own more of the areas. Now I'm going to talk about the best strategies for winning control. In short, you want to control the heavy ammo. If your team has rocket launchers and they don't, guess what? You get to capture the points. If it's the other way around, your opponent gets to capture the points. So the better job your team does in picking up the heavy ammo, it's almost guaranteed you'll have an easier match, okay? I've played with people who are like, hey, I'm capturing this point. I'm not worried about the heavy ammo. Big mistake. Always go for the heavy ammo. Save your supers for the heavy ammo. And speaking of supers, there is a time when you just want to spend them for the sake of getting kills. Anytime you get a power play, if you've got your super, that's the time to use it. You want to make sure that you're securing kills when you have the uh, power play going. And that's it, guys. It's not that complicated. Get a good team together, control the heavy ammo, make sure you're not dying when your opponent owns two areas, or especially three areas. If you own three areas, start popping your supers or use up all of your heavy ammo, because that is when you just bust way ahead of your opponent. Finally, there's two more advanced tips I want to share with you. B is usually the capture area that is under more pressure than anywhere else. And if you're having trouble taking it from your opponent, have one of your players sneak off to A or C, whichever one your opponent has, and just kind of give them trouble over there. What they'll do is they'll usually overreact by having more than one player run over there to protect it. When they overreact, that's when the rest of your team needs to run in and capture B. That's the first advanced tip. The second advanced tip is if your opponent has a small lead and you're near the end of the game, do not fight your opponent. Just run away. Run the timeout. Okay, you can run the clock out and actually win the match. The most they can do is capture all three areas. Well, that would give them like three points. So if you're even four points ahead of them and there's only a minute left, your whole team could literally go hide in a corner, run that timer out, 
and win the match. I've I've actually done that with my team. It does work. It's probably not the most fun thing you could do, but if it works, you know, it's something you have to consider. And with you being able to communicate to your team, you're able to say something like, guys, we've got the lead. There's 30 seconds left. Stop fighting. Just run back. It's too close and they need a kill. Okay? All right. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you found this guide useful, do not hesitate to leave me some good feedback. And I will see you guys next time.